Hi there guys, it's Matt here and today I'm going to show you how to use sentence banks to study Japanese and I should have done this tutorial a long time ago so I'm sorry it's a bit late and I explained it briefly on my blog on my process going through like after I've made a sentence bank after I've made basically um, an episode um, or a series of a TV show or an anime or a film and I've used Substance Arrest to convert it into an actual uh, Anki deck. What I then do to actually study through that deck is I go through the episode one by one, uh, like sentence by sentence, and I just sort of go through the episode as if I was watching it. So I want to do this really fast and sort of almost listen to more of the audio than actually reading the sentence on this side of it because you just want to, as I say, make it seem like you are simply watching the show. Um, it shouldn't feel like a chore. It shouldn't feel like you're studying anything. So you simply just want to gonna have the first card come up, press space, uh, make sure you're on the English keyboard because if you press space whilst uh, in a Japanese keyboard, it won't work. Right, press space. You'll hear the audio, which I'm not sure if you guys heard then, but um, you'll hear the audio. The audio will come through. You'll see the back of the sentence. You can read that if you want to. It's fine. You can take your time. But I like to, as I say, I like to go through it really quickly. So I will just delete because I know all the words in that one. I will then play again. I will then delete because I know that one again. Now, say, for example, I didn't know kill man in this, in this sentence. What I would then do is I would quickly press shift and one. At the bottom, it would have said, no to horyu shimashita. Now, what that means is, um, basically it's suspended the note. In English, it's note has been suspended. So what that then does is that it's effectively, for us, it, it means it gets it out of the deck and it's hidden away from us. We can't study it. That's usually what it's normally for. It's basically like if a card's too difficult and you, you don't want to delete it, because you might want to learn it later, but you don't want to see it again. So you sort of suspend it, you hide it, kind of, that kind of thing. Now, from our perspective, suspension in, from what we're doing right now is going to act as our save uh, button, effectively. So every time we come up with a sentence that has a word or a piece of grammar or a phrase that we don't know, we're going to press shift and one, and that will save the sentence for us, okay? And I'll show you how to get them back later and how to actually study them. So as you see, just you just keep going through like this, and whenever you see a word that you don't know, you'll add it to your, uh, you'll save it by suspending it. Now for me, I know pretty much all the words in here, so this is going to be very boring for you guys to watch me do this, because it's just going to be, be me deleting almost the entire deck. So, um, but you get the idea. So for example in here, if I didn't know what Kanzen meant, or Yoi meant, then I could just shift one, suspend it, like so, and it would just move on to the next card, and you save that card for later, right? So then what you can do, if you want to get to your saved cards, you can click browser. You can then find uh, your deck, which for me is under sentence bank and under Maggie. And you'll then see two, all your suspended cards in yellow at the top here. Uh, you might not be able to see this very well, but um, all the suspended cards will appear yellow. Now what, what you'll preferably do is go through every single episode in the deck every single sentence sift through them all essentially watch them all watch the entire uh series again 
sentence by sentence, deleting anything that's too easy. Um, and then anything that you don't know will be left behind. That's the general idea of this. And then you'll have a long list of sentences that you'll be able to use to uh, for, sentence, for sentence mining that you can use to learn from, right? So then from there, what I tend to do is I have, um, I'll have another deck um, with a different name, basically new cards, right? And um, I will highlight all the ones that are in yellow. I will click the little pause symbol. This is Horyu, which should say suspend on on your Anki. Uh, if you're in, well, it will say suspend if you're using English. But even if you hover over it, it still says in English suspend suspend card. So there you go. <laughs> so if you click this one, that unsuspends the cards. And then what you can do is you can click um, the move move to different um, Anki deck button, which is uh, this one in Japanese, Tango Cho Hinko. Uh, and then you can literally, if you've got them all selected, you can just choose your new cards deck, which you should make, and then chuck them in there. Then what you can do later on is you can go through the new cards deck again, one by one. Um, and you can go through and if you you basically make sentence mining easier, right? Because you can go through each sentence and go, ah, okay, this sentence, I basically you, you're looking at sentences that you have saved and they all have words that you don't know. So they're all going to be possible sentences that you're going to add. They're not going to be um, too easy. And then you can then just go through and be like, ah, I want to add this one. Ah, I don't want to add this one. Ah, I want to add this one. And you can do the same thing. You can, you wouldn't be suspending stuff in this case. You would just be deleting cards that you don't want to add. I don't recommend, um, suspending them at that point like there's no point in saving them for later you might as well just delete them um and yeah then you can just um well if you watch my other video on how to make sentence flashcards uh, quickly efficiently and easily or whatever the stupid title was um you'll see what i do in there you, i just go through uh, a load of saved up cards that i have one by one adding dictionary definitions and you know trying to understand the insights that's trying to understand the insights, <laughs> trying to understand the sentence and the components of the sentence. Um, so if you want to know how to do that bit, then I've got a link in the description to that video so you can go check that out. Um, but yeah, that's generally how I use Substore SRS slash my sentence bank kind of method to um, go through each episode um, one, by one, one by one, finding I plus one, I guess, maybe sometimes I plus two, three, four, whatever. Uh, sentences for learning Japanese. Um, the other point that I wanted to make was I don't. This obviously isn't really the whole sentence bank idea that I that I came up with. My main reason for making this uh, that is one reason that I that I used uh, Substor SRS to make all these uh, to make thousands of Anki cards uh, because I enjoy that process of basically watching over the show again and deleting and picking sentences. It's kind of just like watching the show again. It, it, for me, it's not, it doesn't feel like study. As I said before, it shouldn't feel like study. So I enjoy that process. That's one of the reasons why I did it. And the second reason is because you have literally thousands of cards, uh, uh saved into your Anki, uh, into your Anki uh, profile, right? So when you are making sentences, and this is especially useful when you're making the JJ, um, the, the monolingual transition, uh, when you go from making Japanese and English uh, sentence flashcards to making Japanese only flashcards, where you use Japanese only dictionary definition, definitions and stuff. That process is like incredibly hard, right? It's really difficult to get into because you suck at Japanese at that point, and it's just so hard to read a dictionary. So this was one of the ways that I overcame that. And that was literally to have so many example sentences that you could not go wrong. Like if you had, if you had a sentence and you have, um, say you, you look up the definition for that sentence in the dictionary and you see three words in that dictionary definition that you do not understand, you would then go look up those words in the dictionary as well. Now that that's the normal process that most people go through. And while I think that's fine and that can work and lots of people have used it and it does work, I really got bored of that. So I decided to come up, I decided to use this, have loads of example sentences where I could look up how the word is used in context, which gave me a better understanding of the nuances of the word and also the meaning of the word. And it was just a bit more fun. It wasn't dull and boring. You know, I had audio to, to listen to. I had imagery 
to help give context, you know. So it wasn't just, I obviously look at the dictionary definitions as well, but it was also, you know, this also helped. So uh, to do that, by the way, if you're looking, say, for a word that you've never, like, you just don't know what it is. So, for example, we just said Kanzen just a minute ago, right? So if we type in Kanzen, um, what you can do is you can just open up the browser on Anki, type in Kanzen, and literally you get thousands of example sentences. Okay, this is hundreds, but you get the point, right? You just have so many example sentences here from loads of different shows that you've probably already watched and that you enjoy and you know you know the plot too um and it just makes it so much easier like honestly guys i really recommend doing this um and yeah from here you can also highlight the sentences that contain the word that you might want to use again move them to your new cards deck and you can then study those cards so it's kind of like a really efficient way of doing the laddering method of you know when you when you can't find when you can't figure out how to read a dictionary definition you look up a, that new word you make a sentence card for it blah, blah 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 it's basically that entire process but condensed down into a more fun and efficient manner um the only issue is is that making these decks takes a lot of time um and unless you you know this substar srs isn't a brilliant program it crashes you know it takes about an hour to to make one deck so it does take time in that respect um, but I think it's worth it. I think it's definitely worth it. So, yeah. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a like and a comment and all that stuff. Um, feel free to ask me any questions. Although I don't have my YouTube notifications on, so I might not answer. Um, but I will check them every now and then, and every now and then, and I'll try and answer your questions if I can. Um, hopefully. This explained most of the reason why I use this method um, and hopefully explained how to use it as well because uh, although I didn't show you specifically how to use everything, um, I think I covered it, everything, but everything about it anyway. Um, if you're still a little bit confused on how to actually do all this and you want a full-on tutorial, then check out the link in the description below. I have the, I'll have the link to the blog post where I give a, basically a full tutorial on how to use Substress RS how to make sentence banks with Substore SRS and how I study them, which is just what I've showed you, um, and also why I use them, So, which I've talked about in this video. Um, I'll also leave a link to that video where I show you how to make the sentence flashcards themselves, because that gives some inf good information on how to add Furigana, uh, the readings to, to Kanji in different fields other than the reading field um, on the Anki on Anki flashcards, and I will also. Wow, well, I just linked to my blog because I've got some other useful stuff on there to do with Anki and stuff that you might find useful. So yeah, okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, bye.